we have. We do this each and every week, Chris. It's one of our favorite segments. Am I right? Absolutely. What is it? It's fresh. From the comic shop. <laughs> Live from the pressing salon. That's right. Each and every week, we pick out five of our fresh gets, right? Five of our fresh gets to share with you. They could be brand new from the local comic shop. They could be mail calls. They could be AOKs. What have you. If they're new in your collection, we share we share them with you. And your collection, too, because each and every week, you guys tag us. You guys tag us at Comic Book Canon on Instagram to show us what you got. And we have a ton to share with you of people that shared with us. So let's just get to it. We always start off with our guest co-host. They always go first. So Dom, you're starting us off with your first fresh get of the week. What do you got? Okay, so this is interesting. I'm showing you this for a couple reasons. One, I think the cover's really cool. But two, there's, there's a little story behind it, which is kind of funny, which talks about how to be nice to your local uh, comic shop owner and some of the things that you can get as a result of this. So as you can see here, I love this cover with Deadpool. Yeah. You know, he's kind of big pimping it right there. <laughs> it's really cool with the with the with the fur jacket on yeah. and everything. He's in his throne. I love it. Now this is from last month. This this is March, uh, number ten. Um, but so I was in there just yesterday actually, and the comic book store uh, owner. He's like, yeah. He's like, so you know, you're interested in this? I'm like, yeah. So he goes, okay. He goes, you know, you can have it. So I'm like, okay, great. So he goes, and you know what? He goes. You could also have <laughs> this one. He goes, you could have this one. His, you could have this oh one. Oh my God. You could have this one. You could have this one. <laughs> you could have this one. You could have this one. You could have this one. And you could have this one for a dollar each. A dollar. Wow. They have five dollar cover prices. Now, why do you do that for me? One. I'm a consistent customer. I go there every month and I spend money in his shop to support him. Number two, I know what he likes as far as like snacks and drinks. He loves <laughs> any kind of gummy bear thing or like this or um, anything with like Chex Mix. And he loves things with like mango and like mango drinks. So when I go in there, I usually bring him some kind of mango drink and some kind of snack that's related to what he likes. And, you know, every once in a while I do it to be nice, but also he gives me, he throws in like, you know, nice deals every time for me. So, uh, you know, he doesn't say that's why he does it, but I know he appreciates it. And so I'm just saying, you know, you know, throwing a little extra there to your LCS owner and you never know that's what can awesome. happen, folks. I mean, yeah. What, what issue number is that? I'm sorry. 10. Number 10. Is that the first appearance of his shark friend or whatever? I yeah I mean he's he's on there I don't know if it's the first appearance of the show. Okay, that's but that's incredible. That's yeah, that's yeah. Always I mean honestly if if you have a good rapport with your comic book shop owner it's 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 not just nice to have somebody to talk to and go in and my my comic book shop owner hooks me up too cuz we just have I mean we have a friendly rapport. I you know we don't hang out obviously during a pandemic but I always enjoy going in there knowing I'm going to have a great conversation. So you know, just 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 talk to them, guys. Talk to them. I'm sure they see a lot of shit each and every day from shitty collectors as well. And just be a good collector and, and be friends. And, and I mean, look, and listen, right. And for those who are out there treasure hunting and you want to find some stuff to sell, when I first started going to that shop, I went there as a collector who was buying stuff for my collection. But it eventually turned into when he knew I was doing stuff for a business, it turned into, hey, we can make some wholesale deals every once in a while. If oh, you yeah. like deals and back issues, not just new stuff. And so we also have that relationship. So you could build that up depending Absolutely. on depending on the store. Absolutely. It, again, it always it, it's always just nice to be friends with them as well. And they can sometimes help you out. But that's not the reason to be friends with them. Just be a nice person. <laughs> be a nice person. But speaking of nice people, you guys have been nice people sending us your fresh gets as well what do we got here we got a first entry here from his name is non-mutant hero he got a captain america number 307 and he just learned that he could tag at comic book cannon to share the fresh fries he says let's do this not confirmed but if true this would be awesome madcap uh this is the first appearance of madcap and there are rumors uh that that madcap will be in deadpool 3 i am a little skeptical on this because of where it's coming from i think it's we got this covered and yeah. <laughs> always with a grain of salt am i right chris yeah always with a grain of salt oh it's okay no no we didn't see anything we didn't see anything but you know what let's just go with you next chris you are up 
What is your fresh get, your first fresh get, fresh from the comic shop? Yeah, I, I still plan on making a video about we got this covered because uh, the only thing they got covered is how to make good clickbait. Exactly. <laughs> oh, all right. So it's in a big board. It's larger, yeah. It's what larger it, than normal. normal. wonder what it may be. I, I was very happy to get this. I'm so big on this series right now. I'm just, I'm, I have to like, I have every print that's came out of each issue. Um, now I got this and I am just, I love it. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> oh. Last round at number one, director's cut. Nice. 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 That's cool. I want to send this to, I would send this to, so I haven't sent my CGC books out yet. I'm, I was supposed to send them out like two weeks ago. Uh, I would send this out with them, but this would be a, a different tier, which would mean a complete different shipping charge and all that. And it's just not worth it for me. What I might do though, is when I get all, when all the issues come out and I have the whole series, I might send them all off in one set to CGC or maybe CBCS uh, to get graded uh, just because I, I, I'm freaking loving these books, man. And I love that. Uh, that Eastman cover right there, just beautiful. I'm loving the blue and the uh, yeah. desaturated color on that. Well, have you been through that direct, uh, the director's cut? No, I haven't opened it up yet. Okay, yeah, I, I, I haven't gotten that issue. I, I just read number two a few a couple weeks ago. I, I thought it was incredible. I, I absolutely, absolutely loved it. Um, you know what else I'm loving is all, all the all these other people that have sent their stuff in. We got right now. We got our good friend Dan De La Torre. Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen, number 137. This is a CGC pedigree platinum label. 9.6 white pages, Jeff Kirby's story and art. Yo, Dan De La Torre is killing it with these pickups. This is another one as well. I'm loving, like, I don't, I feel like Kirby didn't do Superman that often, but I, I, I'm loving what I'm seeing from that cover right there. I have not seen what the guts are looking like, but that is definitely sweet. Let's do another one from you guys. You mean Josh Comics. Champions number one. This is the original Champions, not the one that they have with Miles and uh, and all the uh, Totally Awesome Hulk. I guess his name is Braun now. So here is the first appearance of the Champions. Found this book at a great price and have always wanted this book. The team is var varied with awesome characters. Angel, Black Widow, Ghost Riders, Hercules, and Iceman. That is a great pickup right there. Look at look at Hercules in the foreground. Just ready for, for something. I don't know. I would not mess with him. All right. Moving on. I'm going to go with my first fresh get of the week guys i was in boston um some of you know i did the show from boston last week and i took some time it was, i was up there for work but i took some time to check out some shops and ryan one of our audience members suggested i go check out comically speaking in Reading, massachusetts i did very impressed with that store it's huge huge back issue bins but not only that all the back issues are 50 percent off and i know it's a it's, it's a marketing kind of ploy to suck you in but i found some really good stuff there uh, I'm going to start off with this one right here. It was uh, Heroes Were Born, one half. It's a wizard, one half. This is the first appearance of Ricky Barnes. This is There's a lot of speculation behind this, as Ricky Barnes may be the, the main protagonist right now in Captain and Winter so uh, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, it was $5. I picked it up for $2.50, 50% off. So, I mean, it's a, <laughs> a Layfield cover, which I'm not too – I mean, I like Layfield, but – his work during this time is kind of atrocious, especially that infamous Captain America cover. But anyways, this, why, I was like, why not? I just may as well pick this up for 250 see what happens if Ricky Barnes is a thing. There she is right there. She does become a version of Nomad, so we'll see. I don't know. Maybe uh, that's where the series is leading. So that is my first fresh get in, from Reading, Massachusetts. That is comically speaking. Ryan, thank you so much. I spent three hours in that store. Not even joking. All right, so Dom, before we get to only you, we got three. Oh, I'm sorry, what's only that? Only three. Only three hours. That's it. I, I, I mean, my brother lives in the area. I wanted to see him and my niece before I left, so he probably. I don't think that would have taken too well if I said, "Hey, I'm gonna be over after dinner." Dinner. You, you get, you get the drip. You, you get it. But anyways, all right, Dom. Before we get to you, we got coveted comics with this sweet. Uh, this sweet Edge of Spider-Verse number two. This is the fourth printing. It's obviously the first appearance of Spider-Gwen. He got this in the mail this week. This is this next one, guys, I've been on the hunt for. I've been trying to look for this one all over. I want to find it myself. I feel like it's easily attainable, but it hasn't been for me. And that is 
Spider Gwen number 24, the first appearance of Gwenum. Uh, and he also got this in the mail as well. Guys, this is just a reminder. Tag us at Comic Book Canon. We will be sharing your fresh gets each and every week on Fresh from the Comic Shop. But now we are moving to Don with his second fresh get of the week. What do you got, Don? Uh, well, now this one's going to be interesting, okay? So this is kind of, I think, what exemplifies some of the stuff I try to share on my channel is something that the average person would pass up on, but it has value to it because of reasons that not a lot of people know about. We call these like bolos, be on the lookout items. So I'm going to show this to you and compare it to that really cool Deadpool cover that I showed you, which like I said, mm. really cool. This is going to look very boring to the average person. Okay. okay. This is very, whoops, whoops, hold on there. This is very thin as you can see. It's a promotional item called Adventures in Leather. Now it's an incredible condition for its age. This was actually something that was given out as a promotional handout by Tandy in 1961. Now, here's an important thing about this. You want to take a guess who did the uncredited artwork for this? Oh, um, I mean, uh, can you just put it up? Put it up yeah. uh, a little more. Is, did they? Ooh. That's a tough. One. Anyone in the chat oh. want to guess? Guys, without looking it up. Get your guesses in right now, right now, right now. Can you would, I'll, can you I'll open, open it up? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> it Moonlit Comics. She's right. It this is Michelle here. She does say it looks super clean in there. Uh, yes, it does. Okay. Yeah, I, I bet you Como Comics is gonna get it here. We got Neil Adams from Como Comics. Yeah. We got Como Kirby. Comics got it. This is uncredited I, I, artwork I by you. Neil Adams. Wow. Wow. Now this brings me. I got this the other day for a dollar. Okay, a, a dollar, a, a dollar. Now listen, to it because the person who sold it to me didn't just saw it as, and this is the comic owner just saw this as just, eh, you know, wow, just, okay, a boring leather thing. So here's the thing. Okay, now this gets back to what we're talking about with eBay. Okay, if you go and you search on eBay either right now for current listings or if you look for prior listings, look for the comps. The one person who had that knowledge that this is a Neil Adams book, put Neil Adams in the title and sold it for over $50, $50 wow. plus $7 shipping or 49 plus $7 shipping. The current people have this listed, do not know, do not have the name Neil Adams in there at all. And plenty of other people who have sold it for much less in the past did not have Neil Adams in there. So you might think, well, okay, well, what's that going to matter? If people type in Adventures in Leather, well, then they're going to find it. But guess what? A lot of people aren't going to type in Adventures in Leather, but they're going to type in Neil Adams' mm -hmm. comic book. And they're going to come across this. And if I'm the only one who's selling this and I have Neil, com Neil Adams' comic book in the title, they're only going to see my listing. They're not going to see the other Adventures in Leather one. So there's another great tip yeah. from you, Dom. That is, but that's a great find. Where did you find that again? I'm sorry. My local LC my LCS. Oh, same awesome. place, like, same place. I got the deal on the ten Deadpool's. That looks incredible. That looks like incredible condition too. That's it, it, it. Was it was? That's another tip, by the way. And um, a lot of people can relate to this. But when you're going through a comic box, that's something that hides in a box. That is between two bagged and boarded comic books, and probably hid in there for for decades. You know, yeah. like like no one and and preserved it. By the way. Because <laughs> when people flip through it, they just flip between the two bag and board tabs and they didn't look between. So Interesting. You gotta, you gotta look between them. Absolutely. Always, it, it, it sometimes it's tedious, but sometimes you find gold just like you did, Dom. That's yeah. incredible. That's All right. Treasure hunting. <laughs> we, we got some more gold to look at here as well. We got Sleater 17. Guys, look at this. Nice. this look at this pickup here, guys. Uh, this is a quarter bin haul. I'm assuming he paid 20, calling it a quarter bin would be paying 25 cents. There are 15 new agents of Atlas, number one here. He's got the, the future imperfect set. He's got two Sheary number ones. He's got also here too, guys. He's got a meet, he's got a bunch of meet the scrolls, which is, that's definitely going to be a hot series with the uh, secret invasion coming out from uh, Disney plus Sleater 17. This is the first time you've sent us anything. This is very, very impressive, and I'm I'm glad you sent this to us. Thank you so much. That is 
that, especially the 15 new agents of Atlas, that's about to blow up, especially if there's anything going on with those characters in Shang-Chi, forget about it. Forget about it. You, you found gold. Chris, what's your goal? What do you got? All right, all right. So I often talk about how I'm not uh, big on variants. You know, I don't like buy exclusives or the incentives, you know, for 20 50 $100 plus. But I am all for beautiful variants. Uh, if I have other options, like your cover Bs, your cover Cs that are still cover price. I actually got this from State of Comics um, in a final uh, cutoff order for uh, like a dollar off. What is it, like 30, 35% off or, or something like that cover price? Uh, Dynamite, five of five, uh, Perillo. Mm. I don't even think, actually, to be quite, is this even the, I, I think it is a variant. I, I'm pretty sure it's a cover B, but just a beautiful uh, Perillo cover. Look at that, that the red sun. That's right. nice. Uh, it's hard to get the real the, the the light on it, but the way that sun and you can even see like um, I, I, I'm pretty sure there's some watercolor in here and just I, as an artist, I'm sorry, I'm just I'm going into every detail and looking at this and it's just absolutely beautiful. It's a little more light on it this way. There we go. That is nice, man. That the detail, the the you know the realistic kind of like it's 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 it's, it's gorgeous. That's nice. that's great. Sweet. Love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a nice find right there. All right. We got some more finds from our audience here. We got True Believer with Planet. Okay. Oh, I, I have to admit, I am, um, I, I, I'm ignorant to Planet Comics, but this is Planet Comics number one. I bet you Como Comics knows his stuff here. Uh, by Dave Stevens. It's one of his favorite, one of the favorites of his work. Uh, Planet True Believer says he's a big Planet, a uh, big Dave Stevens fan. And he also got Venom number 23, this Mark Bagley cover with oh. you got Carnage and Venom and then Eddie Brock right there. So that's those are some nice pickups right there, especially that Planet Comics number one. All right, guys, this is another pickup I had uh, at Comically Speaking, Reading, Massachusetts. They did not pay me to say that, but they had 50 cent bins, guys. And I went through all of them. And I found some really good stuff. So we know Suicide Squad's coming out by James Gunn, right? We know there's a uh, Peacemaker series coming out uh, on HBO Max. They're already in production with that. And we know within Peacemaker that Vigilante is going to be in that series as well. Well, in, for 50 cents, I found the first meeting between Peacemaker and Vigilante. This is Vigilante number 36. This is a nice 80s book. It's in pretty decent condition. for It's in really good condition for 50 cents. I found two of these guys back to back. Uh, there's, you know, there's a little bit of spine taking a, a nice press would do it good. And it'd be in some decent condition may have some rub here and there, but I mean, this is eighties right here. Cosmic boy, like, like these advertisements and stuff like that. So and Mike Grell did the cover really nice find. I was very happy with this as well. By the way, these are so fresh from the comic shop. I didn't even have time to put them in bags and boards. I was very busy. Get off my back. People have been very, very busy. Anyways, I was very happy with this vigilante number 36, four. 50 cents first appear first meeting of peacemaker and vigilante looking for that looking forward to that show based off of that suicide squad trailer anyways that is a fun one right there doc it's gonna be your turn next we're gonna All get right. we're gonna get austin vicky moore here because he is pumped about his noctera number one glow in the dark books he says heck yes finally they are here noctera number one the glow in the dark variant Man, they are so clean. Can't wait to read it. These covers are a thing of beauty. They do look nice. I'm still waiting for mine in the mail from TFAW. Should be here probably next week. So I'm going to check those out myself. All right, Dom, what do you got? Fresh from the comic shop. This is your third pick. My third pick. Um, you know, in picking this one, I just, I had to go back to my original crush. <laughs> my, here we go. My, my true love. Okay. So. I grew up watching the 1960. Well, they were reruns at the time I was watching them, but the 1960s uh, Batman show with Adam West and, and Burt Ward, and I was madly in love with uh, Julie Newmar, the Catwoman. So anytime I see uh, Catwoman stuff <laughs> like this uh, variant cover yeah. that came out, this is oh, yeah. uh, a Jenny Friesen uh, variant. I I love this, so I just had to pick this up with her. Hanging upside down, uh, just just a really neat, uh, really neat cover right there. So it's a cardstock variant. 
and um yeah I, again i just like it for that reason because it's anything catwoman i it cracked I, up at i mean it doesn't only she doesn't only look amazing there but it's the layout of the cover and i you yeah, know chris yeah i'm not sure if you have artistic abilities but chris is a phenomenal artist chris yeah. that's a great layout for that cover wouldn't you say i would yeah. That's why I picked oh. up on myself. <laughs> I pick up all of her stuff. I, I absolutely love her. I I follow her on um on uh on Instagram. I've actually she's very responsive to her followers, and I've talked to her about like what she uses, like what types of pencils she uses, and stuff like that. Because if you look at her base pencil work, um, it's so it's just it's as an artist. Uh, how do, how do I describe it? It's just it's it's super clean, and has a very uh, uh, she's perfected the the art of realism with pencil. Like you get you get artists like Perillo. Like I don't know what he does. Like I bet his base pencil work is very simple. Like it's an outline, and then he just goes in with the watercolor or whatever the graph. You know, he brings it into Photoshop with Jenny. Uh, most of what, what builds her characters is with the pencil itself. And that's what I love about her and what I love about her art. Sorry, I had to, I went down the, you, uh, were, rather were you, the art there, but yeah. Were you, no, we just, we, just, we just had a, a, a live bonding moment right there, Chris. I mean, that was me. <laughs> were, were, were you gonna, were you gonna pick that one? Was that going to be one of your fresh from the comic shop ones? Honestly, no, but ironically, uh -huh. it was it was right it was right under my fresh from the comic shop picks. Has that ha has that happened before though? Or someone does that is that history or no? No, we have had fresh from the comic shop like the same find. I think oh, it was okay. like, all right, all right. I think <laughs> I think a, the three of us had yep. it was a uh, Star Wars High, High Republic. Republic Avengers. High Republic. All yeah, three yeah, of yeah, us yeah. picked High Republic, yeah. <laughs> but that was that was pretty cool how that happened. That doesn't count as Chris's as Chris's um fresh get, but that's pretty her yeah, her her covers are amazing. Art germs is, is amazing as well. It's uh by the way, Dan De La Torre, he sees a bromance forming. I guess I'm the, the odd, you know, the third wheel here. So <laughs> you, guys, you guys do your thing. I'll see you guys later. Uh all right, Chris, but your fresh get is coming up next. I do believe it's your third one. Uh, but before we get into that, we have Vinny Whitlock. I like I like this pick, guys. Vinny Whitlock, you are consistent. Oh, Vinny, we, come, we come got some heat. Mail call here, Fantastic Four Annual Number Seven, the first solo Silver Surfer story. Silver, I thought I was going to get that out, guys. The first solo Silver Surfer story. Solo Silver Surfer story. Solo. I can't say it very fast. Anyways, the first solo solo Silver Surfer story and first appearance of Psycho Man. Gotta love the books that double dip. Incre yes, absolutely. Look at this. This is just classic kind of seven, six, late sixties, early seventies. Fantastic Four goodness right there. Loving that. Um, and then why don't we just get into Matt Stadge? Matt, Matt, Matt has a great one right here. This is the Southern oh, Mariner yeah. number one. Uh, it ain't the he, as he says. It ain't the best looking copy, and probably an over pay at this point. But very happy to have it in the collection. This should have room to grow. However. Uh, please feel free to add this fresh from the comic shop. We absolutely did. By the way, this is, I mean, this is a no brainer to get. He's going to make his way into the MCU at some point and he is going to be a major, major player. Uh, so not a bad pickup at all, man. As and guys keep tagging us at comic book cannon on IG. We will be happy to share what your fresh gets are each and every week, but we're not done with this segment. No, we're not. Chris, you are up next with your fresh get. What do you got? All right, let's let's stick with the theme of uh, amazing artists. And uh, I, you know, at first I was like, oh, okay, you know, it, it, it's, it's dope. But then uh, she started growing on me. Alien number one, Peach Momoko. Uh, again, man, it's really, you know what, I, I, just to do it justice, I'm taking it out of the bag. Wow. Because you guys need to. It, this is rare where we do this, guys. This is very rare. That is nice. Look, you at know, that. she gets she gets so much hate, and I know some of her stuff is is uh better than, than her other, but I just love what what she. You know what this reminds me of is I forget the artist's name, but uh the band Tool uh -huh. used in in artists on a lot of their uh cover work, and it reminds me of like some Tool uh artwork cover art or uh, album artwork, but uh. I love what she does with the the compositions with the spirals in the back. It's just amazing. By the way, Chris, 
my buddy Dan Mills is asking you to share some more of your art. He is a big fan, as we all are. No, that peach uh, mimosa, that doesn't look like a traditional peach mimosa. Maybe it's because of the character she's drawing there, the, you know, it's aliens. But that looks really, really, really nice. That's a, that's a great pickup right there. Uh, before we get into my, I guess, my third one, we're jamming through this, guys. Uh, Joe G, good friend of the show, Joe G. He got new X-Men 128. This is the first appearance of Phantom X. Um, he says something tells me this will be a popular character. I mean, yeah, he's one of those he's one of those below the radar characters that is feels like he's about to break out. I don't know what you guys think, Phantom X. Um, again, below the radar kind of X Men character that you could see definitely making it to the movie screen. For sure, That's I'm personally behind on all my X Men reading. I have not, and it's coming from a huge X Men fan. I have been so uh dry on on keeping up with what's going on with, with the x-men but i will say this uh to joe's point um and i'm actually i have a video in the works to discuss this when we see the x-men in the mcu i think kevin feige and team is absolutely going to surprise us with some characters that we yeah, probably yeah. uh wouldn't wouldn't expect so hey. definitely definitely by the way you got another uh michelle wants to see oh my gosh yes we need to see some art from chris i mean you showed us that art a few couple weeks ago it's people want more they want more anyways all right speaking of wanting more we have some more to share from our audience here we got corkamus corkamus sent us in uh where where are we here oh Submariner, so volume one number 61 it's the first dr hydro the first gremlin the first Laz lizard Lazard, this book always makes me sad. This is the last Bill Everett work. He fell ill during the work during the work on this book and died shortly after in the letters oh, page. Wow. They tell us not to worry. He'll be back. Bill Everett deserves more credit than he gets. He created the 616. That, that's an incredible story that in the book he says, hey, he'll be back. Don't worry. And he just never came back. That is definitely, definitely sad. So I don't have the proper segue, <laughs> but that's, that's, a nice, that's a nice book to have in the collection as it's his last work. Um, all right, here we go. My third pick from Fresh from the Comic Shop. Here we go. It's along the same lines, guys. It's a Suicide Squad. Uh, I found this in a dollar bin. This is another comic book shop I stopped in the Boston area, and I cannot remember. The Hall of Comics. The Hall of Comics, it's called. That's where I got this. Um, it's not in the greatest condition, but it was a dollar. This is Superman number four, the first appearance of Bloodsport. Got it for a dollar. I just noticed that there's some writing on there, uh, but I, I love John. I, I, Dom, I don't know if you know this. I love John Byrne. I mean, look at this art. I love John Byrne. Yep. Look at Bloodsport right there. Look at his, just his Superman is just like, it's, I don't know. Everything John Byrne touches to me is just perfection. So anyways, first appearance of Bloodsport. I think it's like the last, I think he dies in this issue too, which is really kind of like a, a weird, no, he doesn't die in this issue. But it's just it was a weird character for James Gunn to to pull from. But anyways, yep, another another dollar book fine for you know. For me. You know what else is interesting? There, there. Believe it. Well, I, what am I telling you guys? Believe it or not, because you guys notice stuff. But um, for, for anyone watching, but there's um, there's a subsection of collectors that actually look for the broken uh, letters on the top. Uh, that you see how they're like broken and they're like oh, scattered yeah. all around. As well as people who look for the broken uh, price box on the top as well. So Interesting. There's, yeah, there's I actually people who collect. I didn't know them. That. Oh, I right, did. oh, right. yeah. There's there's actually people collect like that specific thing. They look for that. It's pretty neat. No, that's that's. I'm I'm telling you, you're starting to see these subsets. Like, yeah. I mean, this is more broad, but like people right. collect just for covers now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Read the insides, but that yeah. is a subset of that is kind of what you're talking about. So that's. That's absolutely. That's definitely fascinating. By the way, um, here's a segment idea, uh, Chris. There you uh, go. Where is top it? ten broken letter covers or something like that. You could definitely do that. But also, Joseph Ball wants a segment of Chris's cover corner. <laughs> nice. Not bad. not bad. Not bad. All right, here we go. So this is our final entry of the week for our audience, um, and this is Michelle from Moonlit Comics. She got this beautiful. Avengers number 80, The Coming of Red Wolf. First appearance in Origin of Red Wolf and Lobel. After picking up Marvel Spotlight 1, uh, she says, the most, and most of the, the, most of the nine-issue series on well, Red Wolf, I was happy to come across this book. This character is pretty awesome, and I love this cover by John Buscema. I mean, John Buscema, 
uh, absolute legend. Uh, anything right. he touches, it's just it just feels classic. It absolutely feels classic. Good pickup, Michelle. Keep picking those books up. You are all over the place with those pickups. You yeah. got each and every week. She had the this Mike Zek collection with a poster last week. Uh, Secret Wars. Quite impressive. Quite impressive. The collection she does have. All right. That is Who cool. is up next? Dom, you're up next, man. I think I am. But check out Planet Arizona Comics saying she loves uh, or loves uh, logo destruction covers. <laughs> See? I mean, I guess, yeah, you're right. This is a logo destruction cover. There you go, right? See? <laughs> that has its own name and everything. Got the, yeah, the, the, the issue number and the price right there and the, yeah, and the that, comics that, code. That, there you go. Knock, knock the cross. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All, All right, right, Dom, you are up, man. All you right. are up. What do you got for um, your fourth pick of the week? You know, I'm a sucker for number one issues, I guess. And yeah. um, I, I I just thought this was cool, especially because oh. the edition was sweet. Shogun oh. Warriors, a first issue. I wish they had worked them. I, I mean, there's some minor work in, but I wish there was more work in with MCU. Uh, but, you know, you never know what the future oh. holds in store. So, Dude, that, that, is a, that, is, that, that has a cult following, I would say. Yeah. I think it's fair to say that that book has a cult following. Uh, yeah, uh, no, it definitely does. It's such a cool cover, like just the way it's the you know standing like that and the flames in the background. It's just yeah, so definitely. Cool. I think um, I think Giga did a cover swipe of that recently. Um, Corkum is is he he, he uh, he's a fan right there as well. Yeah. Um, so that is a, that's a great pickup, Dom. Yeah. That is yeah. a, where'd you find where'd you find that? Same, same place same place um, good job dude yeah, bulk bulk deal uh just thrown in like i said for a buck <laughs> that book was a buck that book was a buck it's not going for a buck that is definitely going for way more than a buck. yeah no it is it is I, so i'll try and check that out that is that's a, that's a great find all right yeah. chris what do you got for your fourth pick of the week all right I do have a book, but since everyone's, uh, you know, it's just in such high demand uh, and uh, there we uh, go. Corner, uh, art corner, whatever. So, okay. I got an exclusive. You guys are going to get a sneak peek in an exclusive that's not finished yet. All right. But it's a wraparound. It's a journos exclusive wraparound cover. Civil War. Oh, look at that. You got Teen Cat on once. Here, let me get, because you can't Back see Tony. Yeah, we can't. Yeah. You got Whoa, Team man. Cat, and then on the back you got Team Tony. Don't move it. Don't move it. It's look. Oh, hold on. That's there we not... go. There's there's uh, there's there Tony go. right there, and you see Black Widow behind Tony, just the outline, and Ant Man is in this picture. Ant no Man way. is is on Cap Shield. I don't know if you can see him, but he's there. I, I don't see. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to load this up, and we'll have to share it on the uh, comic book canon Instagram. That's that's beautiful though. Look at the, Winter Soldier looks badass, man. Yeah, he does. That's amazing. That's really really good. Yeah, you're getting some props here, Chris. Can I be your agent? Dan's wondering. Uh, Carpen <laughs> loving that as well. Joe G is Joe G. Steve Bradley all loving it. As are we. Good job. Is that your wait? Is that your fresh get? Is that what you're sharing? Oh, no, I got a book. Here we you go. I'm kidding. You're breaking the rules. <laughs> Here we go. All right. I'm on a theme. I always say I don't collect variants, but like I said, if I get, if I can go after – the theme here isn't variants. It's all about the art. It's all about the artist because I got another cover B variant, and that's – I believe this is a, a, a Matina cover, if I'm not mistaken. Joker, number one, again. Ooh, just that, man. Such that a beautiful cover. That definitely looks creepy. That's yeah. a nice cover right there. Wow. Have you have you read? I haven't. Have you read Joker number one? I haven't read that yet. I have. I haven't. I, I am. It's it's on my to read list. Um, but I haven't. I just got these. Uh, like two days ago, and I, I haven't read. To be honest, yeah, I, haven't I haven't read anything this week. I got but... the, the State of Comics Neil Adams one. Um, but yeah. Anyways, all right. Moving on. Here we go. Here is my fourth pick of the week. My fresh pick. I got this again, Hall of Comics, uh, outside of Boston. I cannot remember the exact town, but this is another dollar book, guys. Chris, you're going to recognize this one. Most of you are going to recognize this one, actually. Uh, this is Avengers West Coast, number 62. Nice. Chris, you know this one. Oh, yeah. 
Got it for a buck. It's, it's, no it way. Needs a wow. Help. wow. Needs a little help. I mean, I think a press yeah. would benefit from it would benefit from a press, but um, it's in pretty good condition actually. I, I haven't had a chance to even look close. Yeah, there's a little little bit of you know kind of somebody ate their dinner or something down there, but other than that, <laughs> I think it's uh, I think it's looking pretty good. Um, all right, that is my fourth pick of the week, Dom. You well, are up. Okay, before I show my, I just want to give a shout out, especially since Godzilla and Kong just came out. I just showed the uh, Shogun Warriors book, and there was just a mention in the chat uh -huh. to the Shogun Godzilla with the flame shot, and I actually have oh. a 1970s original Shogun Godzilla with the nice. flame right there. There you go. He's he's bringing the fire right now for all yeah. these fire covers on the channel. There he is yeah. right there. Awesome. He's got that little I had that. Track. I mean, this thing's in incredible condition. And for those of you who don't know, if you've never seen one before, you press this little button down. I won't do it now because it'll break the screen. But this, this, it shoots out like fast. Like this thing goes flying through the room. It's insane. Um, and by the way, just a little thing, because people try to complete these, this tail comes mm -hmm. off. If you find this tail, which just looks like a big pickle, you can sell the tail on eBay for about $75 to $100. Just this wow. tail. Yeah, the hand. If you find the hand, because the hand gets lost all the time, you could sell the hand for like a hundred bucks. So the wow. part also sell. You don't have to have the whole thing. So, dude, uh, I, that was one of my favorite toys. I remember my parents getting that for me. Yeah, and he's got he's got wheels on the, the wheels. bottom too. Yeah, and his, his I, I remember I, I broke off that red thing in the back. I remember yeah. that, but I do remember shooting that that fist at my brother all the time in his face. Like no oh. doubt, <laughs> that thing hurts. Yeah, that thing hurts. He did not. He was not happy. I was He's not. A, I was not a good. Very, good very imposing. So I was not. <laughs> bust that out. Okay. So since Chris brought a creepy comic book out, I am going to bring a creepy one out as well. Uh, this is a uh, Francesco Matino um, variant cover. Uh, now this is um, from Deceased at uh, number three. Uh, so this is like. I think 2019 this is a couple of years old, but uh, it was just laying out there with all the new comics. So I picked it up as a variant cover and, you know, I love picking up wonder woman stuff because she just is so collectible. There's so many people out there that just they'll buy anything wonder woman, but this was a little weird buy for me because of course she looks creepy and ghoulish and zombies does not look like a, uh, you know, the traditional wonder woman, but I decided since it was so off the wall, I just decided to, to pick it up because I know someone's going to want this. It's a good double dipper. You get into the, you know, people who like, you know, the zombie, you know, death type of stuff and yeah. uh, and Wonder Woman combined into one. So I thought it was a cool cover. That is a great looking cover. No doubt. It's Matina, yeah. right? Yeah. No doubt. Hey, I just want to touch touch base on your Shogun Warriors number one. Just looked it up. But a 9.8, it's $122. Raw comic just sold yesterday for nineteen dollars and seventy five cents yeah i mean yeah not got, bad yeah you got it for a dollar you did all right yeah absolutely did all right sure. um also i just got to say one more thing about that godzilla that was, i it just brought back memories i haven't thought about that thing in forever but really? like i totally remember it being way bigger than it looks right now i know you're a large person a large human being at six foot six <laughs> but like I, I remember that thing being like a monstrosity of me trying to carry that thing around as a kid. Well, yeah, I mean, he, he is, I mean, he is pretty imposing back there. Look at him. Definitely. And King Kong right on the other side of your head. Yeah, we got, now this, this is a modern one though, but uh, this is a modern con though, but uh, he, this one looks more That's like you know, in a movie, but you know, he, he, he is, he is pretty badass. That's so. great, man. Yeah. That is fantastic. Yeah, so I got a Dalek back there and everything. So, you know, I keep them down here. They, they got, I need to have someone guard the treasure. So, who better than Godzilla and Kong, you know? Done. Done. You don't need it. Yeah, you don't need a dog. You don't need an alarm system in your house. You're no, all good. No. All no, good. I, I have a Shih Tzu named Daisy, and trust me, she's not guarding oh, she, any treasures. Yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw, <laughs> she's cute. You got, like, sweaters and stuff. Or, no, she had, like, uh, yeah. Right. Uh, no Rottweil or Pitbull or anything like that. Yeah. All right, Chris. Last pick of the week. Fresh from the comic shop. What do you got? All right. I've been, I've been artist, modern artist, variant heavy. But uh, we gotta go. We gotta go. Here we go. Old school, Silver Age goodness here, and uh, that's X Men mm. number eighteen. Really early X Men book. Really, 
nice looking condition. It does have the subscription crease there, though. I haven't, I'm going to give it a press. Haven't pressed it out yet. Uh, it does have a little bit of a tape pull here as well. So that's a uh, great pull. Yeah, X Men number eighteen. Uh, you got some Magneto action there. That's a great, great early X Men book, man. Yeah. That is nice. I have a question here, though. That's just going to ruin everything with it. What the hell is what, what's Magneto doing, Ice Man? Like, like honestly, like do his powers work on ice too? Like, I, what's he trying to do? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, maybe he's uh, using his magnetic field to, uh, you know. Uh, Cause magnetic friction to melt <laughs> ice man. <laughs> That's a stretch. That's an absolute stretch, but I appreciate the effort in there. Like, <laughs> you guys in the comments, so let us know what's happening there in that, that one right there. All right, guys, I am going to close out fresh from the comic shop for, for this week. And guys, um, I think, you know, this is going to, I guarantee you, near and dear to all of our hearts here. I, you know, I guarantee you, I haven't even brought, brought that up uh, with you guys, but. There is a Snake Eyes movie coming sometime soon. Actually, some, I believe it's fall of 2021, and it is completely under the radar. I really believe people should start looking at G.I. Joe's, start picking those up. They're very collectible as it is right now, especially a lot of Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow issues. Um, but I would, I mean, the, the two movies sucked that came out before. Let's hope that they're going to they're gonna get on a, a better trend here and, and maybe kickstart a new G.I. Joe franchise. There's been rumors about an Amazon series, uh, Lady J. We'll see. But I've been looking for this issue specifically. Um, and I, I, again, this another shop out of Boston. I cannot remember what this one is called. But I have been looking for this one specifically. Uh, this is G.I. Joe number 14, the first appearance of Destro. Sorry. Oh, hold on. The first appearance of Destro. Um, it's not newsstand. It's direct, but still. It was three bucks. I got this for three bucks, guys. Two dollars and ninety-five cents. So I'm happy with this. But I, I mean, I want to know your guys' thoughts on this. Um, I'm thinking GI Joe is. You're going to want to start looking out for GI Joes. I really think that that is the way to go here. Again, um, it's not on anybody's radar. This, uh, this, this series, or actually uh, this film, not much talked about. But there is a Snake Eyes film, and it's going to be delving into the history of Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes. I know Snake Eyes really doesn't have much to play in here, but you're going to want those issues in the 20s with Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow uh, specifically. Anyways, that is my fresh pick of the week. I want I want to hear your guys' thoughts, though. Is it time to start looking at uh, G.I. Joe? I definitely think it is time to start looking for G.I. Joe. In fact, I actually just got up while you were doing that. I, I know. Not- I was I was stretching. Yeah. I saw you go. I didn't want to come back you not being there, so I was stretching. Right. I kept talking. About the same, actually, same yeah, thing. It, it reminded me of something because I just a couple weekends ago I sourced a long box of comic books from a guy I bought some trade paperbacks from a week prior, and there was a lot of GI Joe in there, and I, you know, like ninety percent full long box bag and boarded. So uh, I bought that for for forty dollars, but then he had something else that we negotiated a deal for. This is incredible. Wait till you see this. All right, here we go. GI Joe. 155 with the subscription card inside in the back. This thing is an incredible condition. The guy had it. He, he, he put it in the bag and board like decades ago, never took it out since it's been in there. So I actually have this one up right now. Uh, I wound up buying it for 60 bucks. Uh, that's what we worked in. So I got the whole, this plus all the other comics for a hundred. And so um, I have this one up on eBay right now for 300 with best offer i've nice. got like five watchers on it and um you know i'm open to negotiating so i have um you know well i'll probably lower the price a little bit and then we'll see what happens with it but uh the crazy book that so, is absolutely yeah. i mean again yeah. it's it, 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 continuing in the gi joe conversation it seems like a lot of people are agreeing with us that gi joe would be a smart a smart thing to start jumping into before those get Super hot again because this is all cyclical, guys. It's all cyclical. You got peaks and valleys with these properties, and I'm I'm telling you, as of right now, it's supposed. To, I think that the Snake Eyes film is supposed to come out uh, in the fall of this year. So we'll see. We shall see. You know, right I, now- I I think I think another thing too with GI Joe, and, and I know I used to find GI Joes in fifty cent dollar bins often, and that's not happening much anymore. Yeah. 
And uh, I, I think two things, really, I mean, let's not even talk about uh, films or, or TV shows. Those don't need to happen. Are they going to help? Absolutely. But You're right. Uh, I think this, as well as like tra transform the Marvel Transformer series, mm -hmm. um, is is having the same effects. Where these are really well, more with GI Joe because that came out first. I mean, that came out. That was those are Bronze Age books. That issue fourteen. That's a Bronze Age book. They're getting older. Uh, and another thing that's happening right now is that the majority of uh, probably deep pocket collectors are somewhere around our age. Uh, you know, and we are now at this point to where we're collecting comics. We're going back and, and wanting to collect the older, older comics as they get older. And what else do we want to pay attention to? Nostalgic value. And we are extremely nostalgic on our G.I. Joe and Transformers and in, in, in these types of properties. So I think those things right there are already gradually increasing the prices of these G.I. Joe books. If we get these properties announced and then we get actual good movies or TV shows out of them, then it's going to add that extra variable to keep pushing these books up. You're so right. You're so right. By the way, I think Como Comics has you beat, Dom. Uh, I've only ever seen one copy of 155 and I bought it for 25 cents. Yeah, definitely. Woo! Definitely, <laughs> beat, definitely beat me on that one. <laughs> I mean, P. Keel bought his eight years ago for 60 bucks. Yeah, uh, crazy. So they didn't, anyways, they didn't uh, make many 155s. What's that? They didn't make many 155s. No, defined. I mean, that was towards the end of the... Was that the last yeah. issue? Yes, the last issue. Yeah, and I mean, th th what really increases the value on that, just so if people see it, is that subscription card inside. It, it, you know, it's kind of analogous to the tattoos, you know. And the yep, yep, stuff. yep. Here's another good call from Joe G is ROM and Micronauts. Start looking into that as well. Yep. Um. Anyways, all right, so guys, that is fresh from the comic shop. This was an excellent week. Excellent week, Dom. You brought it. It was so much fun doing fresh from the comic book shop with you. Fresh from the comic shop with you.